In this video, I'm going to show how to create a very simple skeleton-driven assembly. I'm going to create a very simple belt guard. I'm going to start by using a standard part. And I'm going to give it a name that uh, that is unique to the assembly, but also denotes that it's a reference. So I like to use like the abbreviation REF at the end. Or you could use skeleton or whatever else. Okay, we're going to start in the same manner that we would create parts from sketches. We're basically going to create just the sketches in this part file. So I'm going to start by creating a sketch on this plane, which is going to be the base of our guard. Now I'm going to rename the parameters as I create them because uh, it's going to make it easier for us to identify them uh, when we move on to the next step which is creating parts from our skeleton. Okay, so this defines our basic shape for our base of our belt guard. Okay, I'm going to rename my sketches just to keep them in order. And you can see that our parameters have been renamed as I was creating them. I'm going to create some additional parameters. Because I'm going to create this as a sheet metal, I'm going to create a thickness parameter. I'm also going to create an additional parameter that's going to control the depth of our belt guard, which I'll show you in a moment. Okay, for our next component sketch, I'm going to create a sketch on the same origin plane and I'm going to project geometry from the first sketch that I want to reuse. Okay, I'm going to shut off the visibility of the first sketch so I can see what I've, what I've taken. I'm going to create construction geometry out of the part that I want to modify. I basically want to put a rip in this particular component. I'm going to use the contour flange tool um, to create the sides of this belt guard. So I want to put a rip in it so that we'll actually have a stop and a start to our, our um, contour flange.
shut off the visibility of my side for the time being. Okay, I'm now going to create a plane from our origin plane and offset it the distance that we specified for air depth. Now I'm going to create a sketch which is going to be our top of our belt guard. Again, I'm going to project geometry from our previously used sketch. And I want to create a vent hole in the cover as well. So I'm just going to offset the outside and create a parameter to drive that distance. Going to create another sketch on the same plane, and this will be the material for the screen itself. Again, I'm going to project geometry of the vent hole that we created. I'm going to offset. Create the Vent geometry as construction lines so that it doesn't uh, doesn't commands don't get confused with it. And create a parameter for the lap of the screen inside the case. Now the last thing that I want to create is I want to create some tabs that will be um, created in the base part that will allow it to fit inside the side and have a couple holes so that it could be fastened together. So I'm going to start this by creating a plane between these two lines in line with the side and we'll create a new sketch here. I'm going to project the tangencies. This is where I'm going to lock my tabs into. And I'm going to create these tabs. And as I do, I'm going to create a parameter on the first dimension uh, to drive the size. And I'm going to use the equal constraint to drive the side of the rest of the tabs from that one dimension. Create a hole in the center of the tab. Make sure it's centered on our tab. Mimic the same hole on the other tab. Making them equal. And again, maintaining center constraints. see we have all of our parameters that we should need in order to create this geometry. Make sure to save our reference sketch. And now we can begin creating geometry. Now to create geometry I'm going to use a standard part template not the sheet metal. Even though I'm going to make these components out of sheet metal I want to start with the standard part template. Um, the reason for it is when I derive our uh, reference into it, I want it to pull in that thickness parameter. And then when I convert it to a sheet metal, it will use it without any issue. So 
So I'm going to drive, pick our reference. I'm going to select from our list the sketches involved with um, this particular component, which we're starting with the base. Take the base sketch. I'm going to take the tabs because I want those also in the base sketch. Um, in addition to that, I'm going to pull our thickness parameter. Right. Now I'm going to convert it to sheet metal. It gives you the message saying that any uniform thickness should be equal to the parameter thickness, which in our case, our thickness parameter is now being used, and you can see that the thickness parameter is being driven by the default sheet metal rule. Okay. I'm now going to create geometry, so I'll create a face based on our first sketch and I'll create tabs. I'm going to create them inwards so that they do not conflict with our sides. And I'm going to mimic those tabs on the other side of the part as well. Save our part. Now I'm going to continue to create the rest of the parts in a similar fashion. Now that I've created the rest of my components, I'm now going to assemble them into an assembly. Start with an assembly file. And I'm going to place all of my components into the assembly, including my reference. Okay. I'm going to use the command ground and root component in order to automatically ground and root all of the components to the origin. Basically the skeleton sketch will drive the positions of each of the components. All the components are fixed in place relative to their position in the, uh, the reference sketches. 
I will save the assembly. I will change the occurrence in the bill material structure from default to reference for our reference sketch so that our parts list and bill of material uh, will not take into it, it into account. Now we can then simply modify any of the parameters in our skeleton in order to drive the shape of our guard. see as we hit return our pump guard our belt guard updates in my second video I will show how we can add uh, simple iLogic rules in order to drive the values in our reference sketch from the assembly through a dialog box